Hey everybody, it's Anastasia, Anastasia's Hump Day Happenings. And this week, I'm gonna give you five things to know about measles because hey, in 2000, what in the world? In 2000, the United States of America said, hey, you know what, the measles virus, we completely got it under control. We, it, it's, it's done, it, it, it doesn't need to be around any longer. There, it's not an epidemic, we have it under control. And it is now, in 2019, the worst outbreak it has ever been in two decades. This is dangerous. So today I'm going to give you five things that you must know, and I'll also share some side effects of what you can do. So number one, it is highly contagious. And I mean highly contagious. So people who are not vaccinated with measles, the, you know, the measles vaccination, if you come across this virus, you are 90% chance of getting it. You're not gonna run, the, run away from this one. So that's number one, it is highly contagious. Number two, if you're infected with the virus, it's gonna take four to five days till you see the rash. So you don't even know you're infected, ha! Huh. But I'm gonna share some insight with you on that. So four to five days once you contract the virus, which by the way, lives in your nasal, the mucus of your nasal cavity, or in the mucus of your throat. So yeah, it's, <laughs> don't even get me started. Number three, the virus lives in the air for up to two hours. So if you have somebody who's sneezing or who's coughing, and how many times do we see that where people just like sneeze, cover your mouth. Find something to cover your mouth with, whether it's your arm all the way. We don't want your mess, okay? Be considerate, be considerate, be respectful. But two hours in the air, so think about that. Elevators, subways, airplanes, restaurants, gyms, movie theaters, schools, um, grocery stores, Uber rides, your workplace. So if you are a patient, so even if I saw patients right now, I would probably ask them, hey, just an FYI, just going through your health history, do you have the vaccination for measles? And it's your responsibility to share with us just so we know, because what if I was pregnant? I need to know. And even though I'm vaccinated, I wanna make sure that my unborn child is protected. So let's go to number four. The first symptoms can be, can, they can mimic a cold or the flu, meaning high fever, runny nose, watery eyes. Maybe you just don't even have an appetite and you're extremely tired. So you kinda of like, is it a cold or is it the flu? Number five, this is how you're gonna know the difference. They're called coplic spots. Coplic spots are red, flat, um, or they could be a little raised lesions in your mouth and they show up and that's when you know you're gonna have measles in another three to four days. That's when you know. So it's gonna happen after, you're not sure if it's a cold or a flu and you start checking your mouth out, it's gonna be on the buccal mucosa on the inside near your six year molar or your 12 year molar and in children, it'll be near their molars also. Okay, so it's gonna be in the back, check the mucosa. I know it's not like we can do this at work and start checking people out, checking our patients or just random people. Um, you know, either get thrown in jail for that, I'm sure, or it'd be an HR issue. Um, but don't go there, but they're called coplic spots, and that's when you know it is not a cold or the flu. You're gonna receive the rash in a couple of days. Complications in kids, especially under five years old, respiratory, uh, it's hard to bounce back from a respiratory infection and neurological conditions. So they can also receive encephalitis, which is you know enlargement of the brain with permanent brain damage and learning disabilities. Now, why aren't people vaccinated? Because some people felt that the vaccination could contribute to autism. So people over 20, if you are pregnant, measles will impact your unborn child, um, potential for miscarriage, stillborn, premature birth, and or that child could have or be born with the measles infection, which is extremely dangerous and life-threatening for the baby. All right, so pneumonia. A lot of people will contract pneumonia with measles virus and it's they'll be hospitalized and some people won't make it. What can you do about it? Number one, get vaccinated if you're not. But number two, if you find yourself having that cold, you find yourself on a conflict spots, get medical attention and you will be in isolation because we want you to be healthy, but we also don't want you to impact anybody else. So these are a couple of things I hope it helped you out and gave you some insight of what to look for for measles and whether to differentiate if it's a cold or the flu. Like, comment, like this channel, and join me here every single week. And until next Wednesday, take what you learn and make a difference with it.